God's amazing grace. Though we will at times experience false accusations from believers and unbelievers, we are to take the initiative in praying for them and offering forgiveness. Here's Gene. You'll notice that I have indeed called this principle God's amazing grace. And what we see is God's amazing grace uh, in the life of Job and through Job. Now, we're approaching the end of the story. And as we do, we're going to see uh, an incredible example of God's grace and forgiveness. Look at Job chapter 42, verses 7 to 9. Amazing passage. After the Lord had finished speaking to Job, He said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I'm angry with you and your two friends, for you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. And those must have been <clears throat> incredible words of encouragement to Job because I think he was privy to what God was saying. And of course, God is verifying uh, the things that we have observed throughout the book of Job, that these men were saying things that were not true. And so God says to them, I'm angry at you because of what you did and how you handled the situation. So God had not intervened. He was silent. But there came a point when He spoke out and broke His silence with Job, but He also broke His silence with these other men. And so He says to them, Now take seven bulls and seven rams. Go to my servant Job. I love that. My servant Job. And notice in this passage how many times He's going to repeat this. Go to my servant Job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves. Now, of course, this is under the Old Testament scheme of things in terms of offerings. Then he says, my servant Job will pray for you. Wow. Job is going to become the intercessor, the mediator, as it were. Then my servant Job will pray for you. I will surely accept his prayer and not deal with you as your folly deserves. What God is saying is, you guys need prayer because you didn't handle this situation well. For you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. Isn't it incredible that the end of all this suffering, God is defending His servant Job. And then Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite, went and did as the Lord had told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Isn't this fascinating? Because here we see this picture of Job really illustrating in the Old Testament what Jesus Christ has become for all of us. The mediator. The intercessor. It's a beautiful picture, I think, of Jesus Christ, what happened here in this particular paragraph. Because Jesus Christ is the one who suffered, who died, who rose again, who sits at the right hand of God today as our mediator. And here in this Old Testament story is a man who suffered. He suffered uh, unjustly, in a sense, because it wasn't his failures that caused this. It was an attack from Satan. And God allowed Satan to test him, to demonstrate that Job would pass the test. And he passed the test, even though he confessed that he spoke at times out of ignorance and even repented of that. But as he got insight, obviously he responded in his love for God and acknowledged his weaknesses in that sense. And here is a man who suffered, who is now praying for those who made him suffer in many respects, or at least added to his suffering, which is a beautiful picture of what Jesus Christ has done for us. 1 Timothy 2, a beautiful statement in relationship to what Jesus Christ is doing for us today. For there is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, Christ Jesus, 
himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all, a testimony at the proper time. Boy, as you think in terms of church history, how many people have told, have been told, that they need an intercessor other than Jesus Christ? I just finished a Reformation tour in Germany and Switzerland where individuals discovered this great truth that they don't need a human priest to atone for their sins, to forgive them, to exonerate them. They need Jesus Christ. He is the mediator, the one mediator between God and man. I've had people come to me who say, I know you're a pastor and I know you have this special connection with God. (laughs) I said, no, I don't have a special connection with God any more than you do. We all have access to God through Jesus Christ. He is the mediator. He is the one who can represent us before God. We don't need another human being to do that. Now, in the Old Testament, God's establishment of the priests to be able to offer those sacrifices fulfilled that role. But Jesus Christ came, and He was the sacrifice, and He is the one then who became the high priest who sits at the right hand of God, who makes intercession for us. So here in this Old Testament passage, we have a a beautiful example of, of Job serving as an intercessor, but it was based on forgiveness. And I love what we read in Ephesians when Paul wrote, and he said, All bitterness and anger and wrath, shouting and slander, must be removed from you, along with all malice. And isn't it... uh, feasible to conclude that when these men came and said what they said and made these sacrifices and asked for prayer, that Job would have been tempted to say, pray for you after what you did to me, the things you said to me, even God's angry at you because of what you did or what you said to me. That wasn't Job. He illustrates forgiveness as illustrated here in this passage. And be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. What an example we have in the Old Testament of forgiveness. So here's a question for reflection and response. Why is it often difficult to extend grace and forgiveness to others, even though we have experienced God's amazing grace and undeserved forgiveness. Why is that difficult? It's difficult for all of us. As I reflect on my own life, you know, we have a temptation. We just don't want to let go of the hurt. We don't want to let go of our pride. Uh, We we don't forgive because we, we want to be vindictive. We want to get even. And that's why the Scriptures say, you know, don't pay back evil for evil. God will vindicate you. We are to forgive even our enemies. And I think here we have in the Old Testament an illustration. Of course, that's exactly what Jesus Christ did when He looked down on those who nailed Him to the cross and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so we have this wonderful illustration to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. I remember events in my own life as a pastor, things that have happened to me. Uh, I, I remember some very hurtful betrayals where people betrayed me that I trusted. And I remember one particular situation that a pastor that I I would have trusted him with anything and everything I have. I would have trusted him with my bank account, with my children. I would have trusted him with everything, but he became immoral. He fell into sin, committed adultery with someone I also trusted. And I love those two people dearly. But then I found out that in the midst of that sin, uh, they were undermining me behind my back. 
And people do that to cover their sin. In order to achieve their goal, to protect themselves, they start striking out at somebody else. And I didn't realize that I was the object. In fact, when I was told by people there's a problem in their life, I didn't want to believe it. I, I loved them so much I went into denial. But the fact is, it was true. Well, several years later, I met this former pastor friend of mine who betrayed me. And it happened to be in a, at a wake where a dear friend of both of us went home to be with the Lord and we were there viewing the body. And he was there. And he took me aside, put his hands on my shoulder. And he said, Jane, look me in the eye and tell me that you'll forgive me for what I did to you. And I looked back into his eyes and I said, I forgave you a long time ago. It was painful. It was hurtful. But I forgave you a long time ago, even before you ever asked forgiveness. Was that easy? No. But I think that's what God asks us to do. We are to forgive. Now, God will deal with those issues. We have to deal with the sin issues. But my responsibility is to forgive. To deal with the sin, yes. I had to deal with that even as a spiritual leader. But before I could deal with that sin, I had to forgive, even though that person did not ask forgiveness and was actually continuing in sin. And so I think we have an incredible illustration here from Job in terms of forgiveness. So here's the principle. Though we will at times experience false accusations from believers and unbelievers, we are to take the initiative in praying for them and offering forgiveness.